Good day, grade tens. Welcome to this next maths lesson. I hope that you have had a great day so far. So, so far what we've been doing is we started off with going through algebraic expressions and now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through factorization. In fact, we're going to carry on with factorization because we've already done quite a bit of factorization already. We have looked at the sum and difference of two squares. We have looked at common factors. We've looked at some basic trinomials and we've looked at grouping. So let's carry on. So what we have done already is we have, let me just remind you, we have done some basic common factors. Okay, we have done um, the sum and difference of two squares. Okay, we have done perfect, perfect square trinomials. Okay, which had exactly the same layout as this, except that they were perfect squares. They were perfect, perfect squares. So now what we are going to be doing is we're going to be now looking at trinomials that are not perfect squares. And there is a technique to this, and that's what we're going to be looking at today and you're going to be learning today. So the first thing that we're going to go through is how we are going to factorize this. And the best way that I'm going to teach you how to do that is for you to go through some examples, or us to go through some examples. So initially we're going to go through some trinomials that just have a coefficient of one in front of the x squared, okay? Or the a squared or the b squared or whatever it is, okay? The squared term. And the reason is because then it's a little bit easier to do. Okay, so let's go through this. Firstly, we have the coefficient of x squared, which is one. So do you agree that the factors for x squared can only be one and one? And this is kind of how we do it, okay? Then we look at all the factors for 12, okay? So the factors for 12 are 12 and one, because 12 times one makes 12. They are six and two, okay? They are four and three. And that's it, those are your factors. So what are we looking at? We're looking at when we multiply the two things together, they have to give us this number. But when we add or subtract them, we need to get the middle term. Let me show you an example. If for example, I have got x minus two, x plus three, okay? X times x, remember we're gonna use FOIL now, right? We're gonna use FOIL. X times x is x squared, x times three is three x, minus two times x is minus two x, and minus two times three is minus six. So therefore we've got x squared plus x minus six. So what can you see? Can you see that minus two times three is giving me my minus six? And we are multiplying these together and then adding them. Well, in fact, we subtracting them. We're going 3x minus 2x. But effectively, we are using the addition principle to get the middle term. And that's what we're doing. Okay, so what we're looking at, since all our prefixes, our coefficients of x squared are going to be one at the moment, that's all we need to do. So we're looking at what numbers would multiply together will give us 12. And when added or subtracted together will give us seven. Specifically, we want minus seven. Okay, so do you agree that 12 times one gives us 12, six times two gives us six, and four times three gives us 12? No problem. So that works. Okay, and why would that work? Because we actually use factors of 12, so that's obvious. But now, when we add or subtract them, we need need to get a minus seven. So let's think about this, and I'm going to write it out slowly. 12 minus one is 11. Okay, and 12 plus 1 is 13. So that's not going to work, right? We've got 6 plus 2, which is going to give us 8, or we've got 6 minus 2, which gives us 4. So that's not going to work. But what about 7 and 4 and 3? 4 plus 3 gives us 7. And 4 minus 3 gives us 1. So do you agree that there is the kind of combination we're looking for? Except that this is a minus 7. So what do we really need? We need minus 4 minus 3 to equal minus 7. Okay, and now I need to introduce you to another trick. And this is using the 
symbols or the upper operands between operations between these numbers or terms to work out what our brackets going to look at. So if this term is a positive, the last, I mean the last sign is a positive, then we know that both brackets are going to be the same. Okay? And they're both going to be whatever this one is. So we immediately know that this is going to be a minus and a minus, okay? So if this is a plus, then the both brackets are going to be whatever this sign is, and that's a minus and a minus, okay? So then we know that the coefficient of this is 1. So do you agree that x times x gives me x squared? So if I can write this as x, and this is x. And then we just look for the factors of 12 that will add up to 7, and we've got 4 and 3. Okay, so there you go. You've got x minus 4, x minus 3. Now let me refer back to this to show you what I was doing. So do you agree that we've decided that 12 and 1 don't work and 6 and 2 don't work? So what do we have? We have got 1 and 1, which are the factors of x and x. I mean the coefficients x and x. And then we've got 4 and 3. Okay, but we want minus 7. So do you agree I need a minus 4 and a minus 3? And if you're using this method, I'm going to change color so you can see what I'm doing. We multiply across, okay? So we go x minus 1 times minus 3. So you go 1 times minus 3 is minus 3 plus 1 times minus 4, which becomes minus 3 minus 7 minus 4, which is minus 7, okay? But you write the brackets as it appears. So you just put an x in front of this and you go x minus 4, x minus 3. Now at the moment it doesn't really seem real because of the fact that this is 1 and 1. And we're going to do lots of examples with, with coefficient of the squared term being 1. But then we're going to move on to brackets that have more than one a different number other than one in the front and then you really need to use this method so let's practice this a little bit okay so let's try the next one and grade tens i would strongly urge you that if you're struggling with trinomials there's a couple of things you need to do the first is you need to learn your rules the second thing you need to do is you need to practice lots and lots and lots. The more you practice with trinomials or quadratics, whichever you want to call them, the better you get at it. Honest to goodness, okay, that's the way it works. So let's have a look at this. And also what I'd like to do is if you're watching this video, especially if you're watching it on repeat, on and of the recording, I would like you to stop at this point in time, try and factorize it for yourself, and then let the video play and see if you got it right. Okay, so we know we've got two brackets, and we know that since this has got a coefficient of 1, the first term in this bracket is just going to be a, and the first term in this bracket is just going to be a, right. Now this sign here is a plus, which tells us that both the signs in these brackets have to be whatever this is, and that is a plus. So this becomes plus and plus. And now all we have to do is look at the factors of 15 that could add up to 8. Okay, so what are your factors of 15? There's 15 and 1, and I'm just going to write the 1 and 1 for the a and squared there, just so that you get used to seeing them. Then we've got 5 and 3, and that's it. Do you agree? Right, so I'm going to again do it slowly. 15 minus 1 is 14, and 15 plus 1 is is 16, so it can't be that. Let's do 5 and 3. 5 plus 3 is 8. Yay, so it's definitely that. So now I'm going to add a 5 here, and I'm going to add a 3 there, and ta-da! There we have factorized this beautiful trinomial. Okay, let's try some more. Okay, so now we've got exactly the same type of thing. We've got an m squared, a 2m, and minus 15. So it's definitely a trinomial, but there's a difference in this trinomial. And what's the difference? The difference, other than the numbers, is the fact that this is a minus. And if this is a minus, it means, if it's negative, it means that you've got different 
different signs or operands in the bracket, in the brackets. They're actually called operands, but never mind. Okay, so in other words, this is going to be a plus and this is going to be a minus. It doesn't matter which order you write it in, it really doesn't. I'm just right, happen to be writing it as plus and minus, okay? Right, then, obviously, since this is a prefix of one, okay, or coefficient of one, this is going to be an M and this is an M, okay? So let's write down our factors of 15 again. We've got one and one. Now we've got 15 and 1, and we've got 5 and 3 again. But this time we want to be, have to look at this. We're going to have plus 5 and a minus 3, or a minus 5 and a plus 3, plus 15, minus 1, or minus 1 and plus 15. Do you see what I'm saying? So let's do that. If we have plus 15 minus 1, do you agree that that becomes 14? And that is not 2. And we can have we could have minus 15 plus 1, which gives me minus 14, also not plus 2. We could have 5 plus 5 minus 3, which gives me 2. Yay, so that works. What does that mean? That means I'm going to put a plus in front of the 5, and I'm going to put a minus in front of the 3. And that's how we're going to write it. We're going to write it as x plus 5 and x minus 3. So it's x plus 5 and x minus 3. There's another little trick. If you find the factors of 15 that give you a difference of 2, in other words, we know that the difference between 5 and 3 is 2. So we know that those are the answers. Instead of going through all this, what you could say is, well, we want a plus 2. So the bigger number of the 2, you know, the bigger number between 5 and 3 has to have the plus in front of it. But if that's a little bit confusing for you guys, then you guys are welcome to work it out like this. And then just take your baby steps. And like I said, the more you practice, the better you will get at it. And, the, and honestly, goodness, this is one section in maths where no matter how much you... You can't do enough of trinomials, and trinomials are useful all the way through to matric. You'll be using them on graphs, on calculus, you name it, you'll be using it. So please make sure you can do this. Right, b squared plus 7b plus 10. Okay, so now we're going to use, again, our knowledge. We know that the coefficient of this is 1, so that's a b and a b, right? This sign here is positive, which means that both the signs in these brackets are the same, and they're both plus. Yay! So then we write 1 and 1, because that's the coefficients of our b's. Now let's look at our factors of 10. So we've got 10 and 1 and 5 and 2, and that's it, okay? So that's pretty easy, because 10 plus 1 gives us 11. So that's not going to work because we know that both of them have to be plus. So do you agree it has to be 5 and 2? So you've got 5 and 2. There we go. Not too bad, hey? Right. P squared plus 3P minus 10. So again, we've got our brackets. We know that this is a P and this is a P, right? Now, this minus tells you what? This minus tells you that the both the sign the signs are going to be different. Okay, so there's going to be a plus and a minus. Now we need to work out the factors of ten. So if we look at the factors of ten, we've got ten and one and five and two. So we want them to be different. So if we go ten minus one, we get nine. Okay, or well, we get minus 9, that's not it. If we take 5 minus 2, do you agree that we get 3? So do you agree that it's going to have to be plus 5 minus 2 because we want a plus 3? So that's a plus and that's a minus. So do you agree, grade tens, that what's happened here is again, because this is a positive, the bigger number, is got the plus in front of it. And now I just want to do one more thing before we carry on with this. I want to say to you that if you ever doubt your factorizing, if you're not sure you got it right, you can always multiply it out again using FOIL and check it, okay? So P times P is P squared 
P times minus 2 is minus 2P. This becomes plus 5P. And this becomes minus 10. So that becomes P squared. Now what do we have to do? We have to add our like terms. So it becomes plus 3P and then minus 10. And ta-da, it's exactly the same as that. So if you ever think that maybe you're getting this wrong and you test, feel free to multiply it out again to check that you're getting it right. Right, now we move on to the interesting stuff. We now have a trinomial or quadratic, whichever you prefer to call it, that has got a coefficient to the x squared and it has an interesting number at the back here. Okay, so the only thing I can tell you at the moment is that we're two brackets. We're going to factorize and there's going to be two brackets. And what can we tell you already? We can tell you that because this is a minus, the brackets are going to have different signs. And one of them is going to be a plus, and one of them is going to be a minus. Okay, now I'm going to go through this very slowly because it's actually very important that you guys get this right. So the first thing we're going to do is look at our 6 and we're going to write down all the factors of 6. So it's 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. Okay, that's all the factors of 6. Easy peasy. Right, now we're going to look at the factors of 15. So we know the factors of 15 are 15 and 1. But you can also have to, because these are different, because they're not 1 and 1 and 1 and 1, or just 1 and 1, you now have to account for the fact that you could multiply them as 6 times 15 and 1 times 1, or you had, could write it as 1 times 15. So you have to write it both ways, okay? Similarly, the next one is, what are the other factors of 15? Are 3 and 5. So then you also have to write it as 5 and 3. And why am I saying that? Because remember what I said to you. I said what happens is whatever you've got, 1 and 1, and, or let's make this an A and a B and a C and a D. You multiply across them to get the final number. And then you add to get the, you add what you've multiplied to get the middle term. Okay, I'll show you. So let's say, for example, we're always multiplying across, right? So now let's take the first one here, and we're going to multiply this with everything. And I'm going to do it very slowly to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing, okay? Okay, so we're going 1 times 1, okay? We're going to go across because you always cross multiply. We're going to go 1 times 1 plus... 6 times 15, okay? 1 times 1 and 6 times 15. So 1 times 1 is 1 and 6 times 15 is a really big number. You don't even have to work it out. Okay, we can work it out. 6 times 5 is 30, so it's a 90. So we're either going plus or minus 90 because these signs are different. So either you're going to get 91 or you're going to get 89 or vice versa, minus 90, minus 89. Okay, so do you agree? That, that doesn't work with the 1 and 6, okay? But you can't cross this out now because it might work with the 2 and 3. So now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply across here, okay? So we're going to go 1 times 15 plus or minus 1 times by 6. We're doing this 1 times 15 plus or minus 1 times 6, okay? And remember, what are we trying to get? We're trying to get out a positive 1. That's the answer we're getting. We want to get out of the sum because that is giving us our middle term and that 1 is the coefficient of x. So just reminding you what we're doing here. If this was x, um, okay, this was x plus 15, and then it was 6x plus 1. That's effectively what we'd be writing if we actually want a bit of minus. It would we be writing if we chose this and this to be our variables, okay? And then we'd multiply it out to go x times 6x. Okay, is 6x squared? That's fine. Then you'd go, okay, fine. 15 times by 6 is 90x. Okay, and then you go this times minus 1x, 1x is going to give me 89x. So that's what we're doing when we're multiplying here. We're multiplying 
across here, we're going 15 times plus 6x, six, six, and we're going x times minus 1 and that's what we're doing when we cross multiply to get the middle term okay so 15 times by 1 is 15 plus or minus 1 times 6 is 6 does not give us a number 1 okay right now we're going to go and I know this is looking a bit messy so I'm going to erase the green I wonder if it'll let me do that oh it does what a pleasure oh, I erased the blue anyway never mind Okay, so now what we're doing is we're looking now. We're going to go, we're going to use 1 and 6, and we're going to use 3 and 5. So again, we're going across, right? So we're going 1 times 3 plus, no, sorry, 1 times 5, we're going across, 1 times 5 plus or minus 6 times 3. 6 times 3. 1 times 5 is 5. Plus or minus 6 times 3 is 18. If you add 5 to 18, you get a really big number. And if you subtract 5 from 18, you do not get 1. So that doesn't work. So now we do the final one where we've got 1 times, we're going to cross that. We cross there, and we're going to cross there, right? So you're going to 1 times by 3 plus or minus 6 times by 5. Okay, and we can see already this doesn't work because 3 times 1 is 3 plus or minus 6 times 5 is 30. So it's either going to be 33 or 27, which is not 1. So what can we tell from this? We can tell that obviously the numbers 1 and 6 as coefficients of the first thing aren't going to work. The first term aren't going to work, okay? So we can cross out 1 and 6 crossing it out okay so now we're looking at using two and three as the possible factors of six okay so let's do that so we've got I'm gonna write it down here so now we've got two and three and our options are 15 and 1 1 and 15 3 and 5 and 5 and 3 and again we're cross multiplying so we can go 2 times 1 there we go plus or minus 3 times 15 Okay, so that's 2 plus or minus 45. So that doesn't work, so we can cross it out. We that's not definitely not the answer. Now we're going to look at the next lot, these two across here. So we're going to go 2 times by 15 plus or minus, okay, 3 times by 1. 3 times by 1, which is 30 plus or minus 20. 3, which is going to be 27 or 33, so that's not an option. So now I'm going to rewrite again this, and obviously guys, you're not going to have to do this like this, because you're going to have practiced this a lot, and you will see that it's actually easy. This, And more importantly is that as you get through this, and as you practice, you will see that it's very obvious, and some numbers aren't going to work, okay? But let's just, I'm just going through it very slowly. And when you first start doing this, this is actually what you need to do. Okay, so we've got 2 and 3 are still the factors of 6. In fact, I'm already going to write 2 and 3. Oh, I can't do that. I'll tell you why I can't do that, because I've already written plus or minus. So I don't know if 2 belongs to the plus or not. Okay, so let's carry on. Or it's going to be 5 and 3. Okay, so we're going to cross multiply. 2 times 5 is 10, 2 times 5 is 10, 3 times 3 is 9, yay, so it works, 2 times 5 is 10, minus 9 equals 1, which is what we wanted, so now we are going to ignore this, it doesn't matter, we're going to put brackets around and then we're going to write across it, okay, now we want a positive 1, so the big number is going to have a plus in front of it, and the small second number is going to have a minus or you can think of the fact that 2 times 5 has to be plus 10 which means that has to be the plus so therefore this is 2x plus 5 and that is going to be oh sorry oh, I did it incorrectly I can't believe I did it incorrectly oh sorry man very frustrating so what do we have we're going to write it across so it becomes 2x minus 3, and then it becomes 3x plus 5, okay, and those are my two brackets that are the factors of this trinomial.
Okay, so the, admit that's a heck of a lot of writing and a heck of a lot of work. Now, obviously, you don't have to write these all out. I'm writing them out so that you can see what we're doing, okay? As we get faster, and faster through this, you'll see that we don't need to write it out. And like I said, eventually, it'll get almost like second nature to you where you guys will go, oh, but it's obviously not those big numbers. Okay, so now let's look at this one here. Okay, so again, we've got factors of six, which are six and one and two and three. And again, we've got factors of 15 that are 15 and 1, and 1 and 15, and 3 and 5, and 5 and 3. Okay, I'm so sorry. I thought I put my phone on silent. I just want to see if it's telling me something about the... Okay, sorry. I was wondering, just making sure that it wasn't the boss trying to tell me that something was wrong with the broadcast. Okay, right. So... Um, so we've got this, right? So now we can see from this, we're not doing this example, we're doing this example. What's special about these? It's nice and easy because of the fact that this is plus. So it tells us that both the signs are the same and they're both positive. So this is a plus and that's a plus. Isn't that nice? So now we can work, that makes it a little bit easier for us to work this out, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to look at six and one, and we're going to multiply across which each, with each of these to see if we can get a positive 19. So this time we're adding up to 19. Okay. So what, if we look at the first one, we're going to do that. We're going to look at these two. We're going to cross multiply. We're going to ignore the two and three. We're going to use that. So what do we got? We got six and one, and what 15 and one. Okay. Six times one is six plus 1 times 15 is 15, which does not equal 19. So it's not that, okay? 6 times 15 is a very big number. So we immediately know it's not going to add up to 19, so we can ignore it, okay? So that's what I said about getting a bit faster. Now we're looking at 6 and 1 and 3 and 5. So if I write it out, 6 and 1 and 3 and 5. 6 times 5 is 30, and 3 and 1 is just 3, so that's not going to work. And finally, we're looking at the last two. We've got 6 and 1 and 5 and 3. And 6 times 3 is 18, but 1 and 5 is 5, but we add them together, it doesn't give you 19 either. So 6 and 1 is again not working. Okay, so now let's change the color, and then let's look at what the other options are. So now we're looking at this lot here. Okay, so we've got 2 and 3, and we've got 15 and 1, 1 and 15, 3 and 5, and 5 and 3. So 2 times 1 is 2, and 3 times 15 is 45, so that obviously doesn't work. 2 times 15 is 30, and 3, that obviously doesn't work. Okay, see what I'm saying about that? We can obviously cancel some of them. 2 times 5 is 10, and 3 times 3 is 9, and that works, yay! So we're using these two. So if I had to write it out prettily, it would be 2 and 3, and 3 and 5. Now remember, we cross multiply. So we're going 2 times 5 equals 10, and 3 times 3 equals 9, so it adds up to 19. But we write it straight across, so it becomes 2x plus 3, and then it becomes 3x plus 5. Right. Okay, now let's do a couple more just to make sure you really got, have to understand this. Guys, again, like I've said, I know that there are other methods that some teachers teach. I tend to use this method because I find that even though initially it seems very tedious, in the end, especially if you practice, it becomes one of the fastest methods out there. So, and some people, some of my students actually find that they can even factorize in their heads. They don't need to draw it out, okay? So again, immediately we can see, well, that's a plus. That's nice. That means that both the signs are whatever this is, and they're both plus. The factors of one are one and one, okay? And this is actually a really easy one because the factors of two are what? They are 
two and one, and that's A and A. Now that seems really easy, but let's just check it to make sure we actually get the right answer, okay? Because that is the only way it could work. Let's see if we get the right answer. So two A times A is two A squared. Two A times one is plus two A. And then this becomes plus A, and then that becomes plus one. So yes, it's two A squared plus three A plus one. So again, how pretty and easy was that? I'm just gonna run through it again with you just in case you missed it, okay? So because this is a plus, we know both the brackets have got the same sign in the middle and they're both plus, okay? Both factors of the last term obviously have to be one and one. The only factors of two are two and one. So it can only be two a plus one and a plus one. And there you go. And obviously you don't have to write that one. So that was a nice easy one. Let's do eight x squared plus 14 x minus 15. Okay. So again, now we need to, and I'm actually going to erase my writing because I'm going to use lots of space in this one. Okay, so we're not looking at that anymore. We're looking at this 8x squared plus 14x minus 15. So we need to look at the factors of the first term. Factors of the first term are 1 and 8 and 2 and 4. And that's it. That's nice and easy. Factors of the third term are 15 and 1. 1 and 15. You must be so bored of these numbers by now. 3 and 5 and 5 and 3. Okay. What do we notice? We notice that this is a minus, and which means that the signs in the brackets are different. And the bigger number has to have a plus because we're aiming for plus 14. Okay. So we're going to start off by looking at 8 times 1, I mean 8 and 1, this one there, and we're going to multiply it across these to see if we can get a number of 15 in total. So remember we cross multiply, it's always cross, right? So 1 times 1 is 1 and 8 times 15 is huge, so that doesn't work, okay? 1 times 15 is 15 and 8 times 1 is 1, so that doesn't work because 15 and 8 does not give you 14. Now I'm going to write out the next one so we can see what we're doing. So if we looked at that and looked at that, now we're looking at this one, yeah? So it's 3 and 5. So 8 times 3 is 24 and 1 times 5 is 5, and no matter what we do, whether we add or subtract these, we're never going to get 14, so that doesn't work. So let's look at 5 and 3, so we've got 1 and 8, and 5 and 3, and 8 fives are 40, so that's definitely not going to work, so therefore we can say, okay, 1 and 8 definitely don't work. So what are we left, and obviously you guys can, let's see if I can do it here, you guys obviously will be working in pairs, so you can just erase it, but um, yeah, okay, it's not too bad. Okay, so now let's see if we can use, just look at these. Okay, now, 2 times 1 is 2 and 4 times 15 is a very big number, so therefore it is not going to give us 14, so that doesn't work. 2 times 15 is 30 and 4 does not give us 14. 2 times 5 is 10 and 4 times 3 is 12, which gives us 22. Not going to work. So we're left with 2 and 4 and 5 and 3. And now we have to hold thumbs that it works. So 2 times 3 is 6 and 4 times 5 is 20, right? But we want plus 14. So we need minus 6 plus 20 to give us plus 14. So how are we going to get minus 6? We need to put a minus in front of the 3 and a plus in front of the 5. And then remember that we write it across. So it becomes 2x plus 5, 4x minus 3. Okay. 
So again, grade 10, what I'd seriously urge you to do is, if you're especially if you're struggling with trinomials, is to re-watch this video and then especially if you're struggling still after this. And then what I want you to do is stop the video or pause it at the beginning of each of these pages and try and do the factorization by yourself. And then watch it afterwards to see if you got it right. Right, now we're starting to look at some things that are a little bit more complicated, okay? So this time we've got 3 plus 6x six, six squared minus 11x. So the first thing you need to realize is this is not in the correct trinomial order. It's supposed to be an x squared, something x, something number, okay? So we need to rewrite it. So it's 6x squared minus 11x plus 3. And you must remember that if there's nothing in front of the 3, then it implies that it's positive, okay? Now we need to factorize this. So now we need to look at the factors of 6. Okay, wait, I'm just going to write my brackets in here. When you look at the factors of 6, you've got 6 and 1 and 2 and 3. And the factors of 3 are just 3 and 1 and 1 and 3. That's all you got, okay? This plus tells me that both the signs are the same and they're both whatever this is, which is minus, okay? So now let's see if we can get an 11 out of this, okay? So 6 times 1 is 6, and 1 times 3 is 3, okay? What I'm doing is I'm using that and that. So I'm going 6 and 1 and 3 and 1, and I'm cross-multiplying. So I'm going 6 times 1 is 6, and 3 times 1 is 3, which in no way gives me 11, okay? Now I'm looking at these two. We've got 6 and 1 and 1 and 3. And 6 times 3 gives me 18, and 1 and 1 gives me 1, which no way can give me 11. So it's obviously not this. So now let's look at these two here. Okay, so we've got 2, 3, and 3 and 1. 2 times 1 is 2. And 3 times 3 is 9. And look, if I add them together, I get 11. But remember, we've said that both the signs have to be negative, which is great, because then you get 3 times minus 3 is a minus, and 2 times minus 1 is a minus, which gives me minus 11. And then you just write the brackets across. So you end up with 2x minus 3, and then 3x minus 1. Sure. Okay. Right. Now let's look at this. We've got 12p squared plus p minus 6. Okay. So you need to remember that even though we're doing trinomials, you always look for a common factor first. So we've got 12p squared and we've got a 6. So that looks promising. But there's nothing here. It's just a 1. So there are no common factors that we can divide through by. So we are going to just have to factorize, factorize like normal. So because this is a minus, it tells me that the signs are different and one of them is a plus and the other one is obviously a minus. Our factors of 12 are 12 and 1, what, okay, uh, 6 and 2 and 4 and 3. Hmm. My factors of 6 are 6 and 1 and 1 and 6 and 3 and 2 and 2 and 3. Sure, okay, and we want a positive 1 as the difference. So 12 times 1 gives me 12, and 1 times 6 gives me 6, which is not going to work. 12 times 6 is 72, that's ridiculous. It's not going to nearly give me a plus 1. 12 times 2 is 24, and 3 is not going to work. And 12 times 3 is 36, and 2 is not going to work. So 12 and 1 are not contenders. Let's look at 6 and 2. So we've got 6 times 1, which is 6 and 2 times 6, which is 12, and the difference between 12 and 6 is not 1, nope. 6 times 6 is 36, nope, that's not going to work. 6 times 2 is 12, and 2 times 3 is 6. I feel like I've done this one before. Okay, that's not going to work. And then 6 times 3 is 18, and 2 times 4, 2 is 4. That's not going to work. So we're looking at this bunch here. Right, so 4 times 1 is 4, plus or minus, or minus, should we say 3 times 6 is 
18, so that gives me 9 with 14. That's not going to work, so we can cancel it out. Then we've got cross multiplying with this. We've got 4 times 6 minus 3 times about 1. 4 times 6 is 24 minus 3. Nope, that's not going to work. Let's try this one. We've got 4 times 2. 4 times 2 plus or minus, should we say minus, 3 times 3. 3 times 3. 4 times 2 is 8, and 3 times 3 is 9. Yay! So there's a difference of 1. So we know, therefore, we're going to be using this and this. Let's write them out over here. You've got 4 and 3 and 3 and 2. Okay, we're multiplying across. Okay, and we want a positive. So 3 times 3 is plus 9, and 4 times minus 2 gives you 8 which we can subtract. So therefore, and remember we write them across, so you end up with 4x plus 3, 3x minus 2. There we go. Okay, now let's look at this one. Oh. 22t squared minus 9t minus 1. 22t squared minus 9t minus 1. Okay, so we're going to factorize this. We're looking at the factors of 22. Okay, so the factors of 1 are just 1 and 1. I need to just pause this video. Oh, no, I don't. It's fine. Okay, sorry. I was confused. So this is 1 and 1, right? What does this minus tell you? It tells you you've got different signs and one's a plus and the other one is a minus. And now we need to look at our factors of 22 that are going to give it a difference of 9. So we've got 22 and 1, 11 and 2. Okay, and do you see already that 11 and 2, if we subtract them, we get a 9. But what do we want? We want a minus 9, minus 9. So let's think about this. What are we doing? We're doing 11 and 2 and 1 and 1, but we want a minus 9. So this has to be the minus because we're cross multiplying, and this has to be plus because 11 times minus 1 is minus 11. So this is going to be 11t, and this is going to be 2t. There we go. Okay, let's look at this one. Final example for the day. We've got 2x squared plus 13x plus 21. So the first thing you always do is look for common factors, and there aren't any. Okay, now, the first thing, next thing you do is you look at the sign. It's positive, and you go, yay, because then both the signs are going to be whatever that is, and they're both positive. Then we look at the factors of 2, and we rejoice because 2 and 1 only have two factors, 2 and 1. The factors of 21 are going to be 21 and 1 and 1 and 21, right? 2 doesn't go into it, but we do have a 3 that can go into it. 3 goes into 21 7 times, okay? And then you write it that way as well, 7 and 3. Then we've got nothing else that can go into it. So now we want a difference of 13. So 2 times 1 is 2, and 21 times 1 is 21, so that's not going to work. 2 times 21 is 42, and that's 2, so that's not going to work. 2 times 7 is 14, and 1 times 3 is 3, so that's not going to work. But 2 times 3 is 6, and 1 times 7 is 7, and that equals 13. Yay, we got something. So it's 2 and 1 and 7 and 3. And we are multiplying across, right? But we add together. So it becomes 2x plus 7x plus 3. Right, grade 10. So that is what we've done today. Is we've done some trinomials. We've moved from our easy trinomials where we had a coefficient of 1 in front of the squared term and we moved straight 
on to the quite difficult questions where we had various different coefficients that we had to use to calculate these brackets. Please go practice, practice, practice. And then guys, go look on the Turner Able system. There are hundreds of worksheets, multiple choice questions, and there are lots of exam papers as well. And I urge you to join the grade 10 maths class so that you can ask me questions and point out the sections that you guys are really struggling on. Have a great day.